In this video, we are going to conduct an experiment regarding the formation of the cloud that does not exhibit Tyndall effect inside a jar. First, we will have a jar filled with boiled water. Then, we will swirl the hot water in the jar. After that, we will place some ice on the steel plate and rest it on top of the jar for a few seconds. Continually, we will take it off and quickly spurt some air freshener inside and put back up on top of the jar. The cloud formation in the jar is due to the condensation of warm air and the aerosol happens to provide cloud formation condensation nuclei. This allowed the water vapor to condensate into tiny cloud droplets and thus the cloud is formed inside the jar. Tyndall effect is the scattering of light as a laser beam passes through a colloidal solution. The individual suspension particles scatter and reflect light, forming a phenomena called Tyndall cone. Now we are going to show you that the cloud form do not exhibit Tyndall effect. Here we point the laser pen onto the jar. You can see the light beam appears as a straight line in the jar. This is because the diameter of the water droplets particle is smaller compared to the wavelength of the laser. Thus, the laser beam can pass through the cloud without any dispersion. Now we will compare with the flower solution, this is the collider solution. Again, we point the laser pen on this flower solution. You can see the light dispersed into a conical shape, and this is what we call a Tyndall cone. This Tyndall effect is due to the diameter of the flower particle is much larger than the laser wavelength. As the light passes through the particle, the light beam will be scattered off by the particle into different directions. One of the applications of Tyndall effect is ultra microscope. It has been used for general observation of aerosol and colloid in studying Brownian motion, in observing ionization tracks in a cloud chamber, and also in studying biological ultra structure. A nephilometer is an another application of Tyndall effect. It is used for monitoring the pollution level, climate changes and visibility as well as determining the concentration of immunoglobulins in serum and other biological fluids.